Cellular networks have come a long way from your basic phone calls to text messages, and now the internet. We're already at the point where network carriers are now offering 4G and 5G home internet. However, while these carriers are releasing home-based cellular internet, they're doing so with their devices that lack customized controls that home network admins would enjoy. Well, with a Raspberry Pi, a SIM card, a cell modem, and a USB adapter, you can have cellular home internet anywhere you have coverage. And in this video, we're gonna cover how you could set this up for yourself, starting with 3G. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're making a Raspberry Pi router with 3G internet. So I'm sure you're wondering, why would anyone wanna to connect to slow 3G network? Well, to be fairly honest, I've had some difficulty connecting to 4G LTE with my cell modem I purchased for my Raspberry Pi. While I'm working on setting up 4G LTE using a different cellular modem, I was able to connect to 3G with this modem. Even though it's capped at 10 megabits per second, it still has some use cases, like in remote areas that can't get faster speeds, for use as backup internet connection, or for low bandwidth deployments such as certain IoT devices. Depending on where you live, such as in the United States, this may not be the best solution since 3G will be phased out. For more information, check the links down below. To get a head start, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi router from my prior video. You can check that out in the top corner. For this demonstration, I'll be using the following hardware. A Raspberry Pi 4B, a Telet LE910 C4 mini PCIe modem, a 6-fab Pi-Hat USB cell modem adapter, a GPIO extension header, an activated SIM card, a USB-A to micro-USB cable, Pi-Hat mounting kit and screws, cellular antennas, and a small Phillips screwdriver. For this demonstration, I'll be using the following software, OpenWRT 21.02 Snapshot, and Minicom Serial Terminal Emulator. You can find the links to the hardware and the software in the description below. Let's build ourselves a cellular Pi. To get started, we'll take our Telet cell modem and attach the antennas. We'll attach the white LTE antenna to the diversity antenna interface, the black LTE antenna to the main antenna interface, and the black GPS antenna to the GNSS antenna interface. Next, we're going to mount the 6-fab Pi-Hat USB cell modem adapter on top of the Raspberry Pi using GPIO extension header and screws to secure it in place. This Pi-Hat will sit on top of the CPU and will line it up with the GPIO pins on the Pi and the header to the inserts available on the Pi-Hat. You can place an additional GPIO header on top of the extension header if you need those pins exposed. But for this project, I won't be doing that. Once the pie hat is in place, we'll use the screws and align them with the holes and tighten to finish securing it. Once complete, we'll insert the Telet modem into the mini PCIe port and then push down to secure it. Then we'll insert the activated 6-fab SIM card into the Pi Hat. Lastly, you can plug in the provided USB cable to the USB 2.0 port on the Raspberry Pi and micro USB side into the micro USB port on the Pi Hat. Let's take a quick look at how the Raspberry Pi looks with the cellular Pi Hat installed.
Before we move on, we'll plug in our Ethernet cables and adapter from the Raspberry Pi to the laptop and the modem for our LAN and WAN connections. Now, we'll plug in the power adapter and we'll turn it on. Next, we'll move on to the software. First, we'll log into OpenWRT over SSH and proceed to install the proper packages. After logging in, we'll run the command opkg update to get all the packages. After this, we'll run the command opkg install and list out all the packages we need for 3G network access. Refer to the video description below for the necessary packages. Once these packages have been installed, we'll perform a reboot. After the reboot is complete, we'll test the cell modem to make sure it's connected and activated on our cellular carrier's network. We'll log back in with SSH and first check the D message to make sure the serial interfaces were loaded. Here, we will find the data we need to access the serial interface and the baud rate. You can see the serial interfaces here, and for the baud rate, we could see that right here. After we have verified this, we'll interact with the modem using the minicom command, specify our baud rate, and specify our serial port. For this modem, the serial ports available to us are TTY USB 2 and TTY USB 3. You can refer to Telet documentation to find out which serial interfaces are available by default. We'll access the serial port with the following command, minicom-b115200-d forward slash dev forward slash ttyusb3. Once we've executed the minicom command, we can use the following serial commands to verify connectivity using AT commands. Again, refer to tele-documentation or your specific modem manufacturers for the AT commands. The first command we'll execute is AT to make sure it's able to take our commands. As you can see, we have received an OK, so we can proceed. The next command will use AT plus COPS question mark to see the available network operators. Here we see the first output is zero, meaning automatic operator choice. The third output is our actual operator, which could be AT&T or T-Mobile, and in this case is AT&T. The fourth output is access technology selected, and in this case it's 2, meaning UTRAN. Then we'll check our network registration using the AT plus CREG question mark command. We received a 5 back for the second output, which indicates the SIM is registered, but is also roaming. Ideally, we should receive a 2 to indicate we are registered and not roaming. Then we'll check our cell signal quality to verify how strong it is using the command AT plus CSQ. Here, the first number indicates our cell signal quality. As long as it's between 2 and 30, we have a good signal. This translates into a range of negative 109 dBm and negative 53 dBm. Ideally, we want to range as close as 0 to possible for a strong cell signal but that is not likely to happen. Lastly, we'll check the PDP context, which effectively is the information we need to connect to our network, such as the APN. We'll do this by using the command AT plus CGDCONT question mark. Here we see the PDP context, like IPv4, IPv6, or IPv4 v6, APN, and other numbers we don't need to worry about. If you're curious, the last number indicates use for emergency services. In this case, we see an entry with the last number as 1 and the APN as SOS. That's a network we definitely don't want to connect to. We should already have the APN from our network provider after activating the SIM. So if you don't see it here, don't worry about it. You can still move on. We'll exit the Minicom by pressing Control A, then Z, and then X. Once we have verified our connectivity, we can proceed over to Lucy and establish the connection. We'll log in via Lucy and configure the 3G wireless WAN. Upon logging in, 
navigate to Network, then Interfaces. In here, we'll click Add New Interface and fill in the appropriate information. We'll set the name to WAN, click the protocol dropdown, and we'll choose UTMS GPRS EVDO. Then click Create Interface. Next, in the enlarged pop up, leave Bring Up on Boot checked. Click the modem device dropdown and choose Dev TTY USB 2. Click the service type dropdown and choose UTMS GPRS. For APN, we'll type in Super. I received this from my network provider. For PIN, leave that as empty. For PAPCHAP username and password, we'll leave both as empty. For dial number, leave that as blank as well. Next, move to the Firewall Settings tab, and in the Create Assigned Firewall Zone dropdown, choose WAN. Then click Save. Lastly, we click Save and Apply. Now we should see the WAN interface show up in our interfaces list, and we should see RX and TX traffic, indicating that we are connected. Let's run an initial ping test through the new interface to verify it's connected using the terminal. In this case, the interface's name is 3G-WAN. As you can see, we got data back, which also helps us confirm we're connected through the cellular network. Let's run a quick speed test to see how fast our connection is. First, we'll stop the wired WAN interface by clicking the stop button next to it to isolate our internet connection to the WAN interface. Then we'll go to speedtest.net in our browser to test the connection speed. As you can see, it's not that fast, and that's because we are using a 3G connection and because I'm also roaming. Your speeds here will vary, depending on the strength of your cell signal. And that covers it for setting up a 3G connection on a Raspberry Pi router with OpenWRT. So as you can see, it shouldn't be too difficult to connect to a cell network with OpenWRT and a Raspberry Pi once you figure it out. And when you do, you open up so many possibilities not available on most consumer grade routers. I'm working on connecting to 4G networks for faster speeds, so while I'm working my way through that process, stay tuned for more projects. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What would you do with a cell connected router? Let me know in the comments below and we can discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.